at it. We are on the humble crusade to 100k, and when we do that, a Demon Kilaba episode appears. Thank you, and you are gonna hate this one. Oh. I'm Isander. I'm Coda. And thank you for tuning in to the 100k special. We've done it. Yeah. We did the thing. Yeah. We did do the thing. Yeah. It is kind of weird how fast we have blazed past every single goal we set. This was started less than a year ago, and we're already here already. It's also weird, like, just how big we've gotten. Like, uh, we will stare at other YouTube channels and go, oh my god, they're so, they're so, like... Massive! They're massive. And then we look at our numbers and we're like, oh god, we're them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's jarring, and none of that is possible without you guys. Thank you so much. However... We will get to the victory lap later. For now, I made a, I am a man of my word. I made a promise ages ago, and I don't know if this clip is going to make it in. If it's not, I promised that if we made it to 100k, we would get a Demonculaba episode. Demonculaba episode appears. And we're going to get that episode today, baby. Dedicated to the worst thing in 40k. Relative. I'm going to, again, it's, it's really relative. We'll get into this more later, but it's a very specific kind of gross. And so, for some people, they're going to go, eh. And for other people, they're going to go, Ooh. Why is this in here? It, it has a very, it's it's one of those things, and it comes from an Ultramarine book, actually. So this time, I don't even have to shoot them into the episode. They do the, they're going to be here regardless, baby. <sighs> um, <laughs> I love it. Um, but the, the funny thing about it is, um, and I've heard other people say this, uh, it was Bricky who said this, actually. If, and he put this really well, if this was written... By anyone less competent, it would come off as a really weird, like, base... Like, it came from someone's basement. Ah. Uh. If, if, if you just read the description, that's what it would feel like. However, it's actually housed in a really good book series written by a really good author. So, and so it, it, it doesn't get away with it, but it has its, like, proper well, context. And that's the thing a lot of people forget about the Demoncula. If you just yank it out of the book without any of the context around it, it's just, Why? You put it in the context of the book and the author, you're like, okay. Okay. I'm still not a this fan, is, personally. This is awful, but, like, I can see, I can see how it got where here. it came from. I, it's, it's, oh, come on. I got, I think, Graham McNeil. It's Graham, Graham McNeil. McNeil. Yes. Um, he's a horror writer, at least according to his bio. And, he, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's good at it. <laughs> um, it it's, it's, uh, it's a series that, it's going to cover a few figures um, that we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cut out a lot of named characters just because this isn't... We're trying to keep this brief. Right? Yeah. This will quickly turn into like an old Homer novel novel play thing yeah. where you just have like 20 people named and then killed as soon as they get named. Exactly. However, if I have to give it credit on one thing, it is the atmosphere that the Demonculaba gives to the book it's in. I want... Like, listen, in my heart of hearts, do I wish that wasn't there? Kinda, yeah. But I can't take get rid of it because the book would literally get worse without it. It, it contributes so much to the atmosphere that it just, it has to be there, right? And you'll see why in a moment. First, we need to get to the very beginning of the story. And like any good story, it starts with the Imperial Fists getting dog-walked. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. It's technically also an Iron Warriors episode. Welcome so. back to the Iron Cage. Yeah. I, it's not just the Iron Cage. It, okay, listen. Every time the Iron Warriors and the Imperial Fists meet, it's never close. One side gets walked really aggressively. Unfortunately, both times the Imperial Fists get walked, it had consequences. This is another time. They got absolutely walked, and it was so brutal that the guy who led that assault immediately got promoted to a demon. <laughs> He did that good. Chaos was like, oh yeah. It's just like, you won. Let's go. Yeah. Up. Up, and it, up, up. Up the chain. And this led to the next guy in the chain of command, Hansu, being promoted as well. Remember him. Hansu. He's really cool. He's really important. He's got a living metal arm. He's... Uh, I'm not going to say he's a cool dude, but he... I don't know if he has a model, but he's, he's, he's an important figure, is what I'm going to say. He's a half-breed that was made by mixing the two different legions that we're fighting, like the Imperial Fists and the Iron Warriors. So he's half and half. So he's an imperial warrior. Kind, of, yeah, yeah. So he's got a little bit of both, uh, and <laughs> or an iron fist. It has this really fun effect because to do that, it, it, it happened post heresy. So he's relatively young as far as you know, chaos marines go. So he's like the new, the the young whippersnapper, and so 
it's it's the equivalent of like a guy who served in Vietnam somehow having to serve with people who served in World War One and Two, and it's like Nam was bad. Don't get me wrong, but that's the greatest generation. <laughs> They will always look at you like, oh, yeah, but you didn't fight in a real war. You weren't in the trenches, literally. Yeah, yeah you didn't have to deal with trench food. You didn't need to line the trench. Like, come on. Come on. I was there in the Argonne. Like, it's such an unwinnable argument. It's like the walking uphill both ways in the snow. Oh, no, I love the walking uphill both ways Th- in the that's snow. That's how Hansu is getting treated. <laughs> it's so funny. And, and that's because um, most of the people he was serving with uh, remember the heresy and the time after. Ooh. Hansu wasn't there for that. So yeah, they remember World War One and Two. They were there for both of them. And the key thing to remember is the traitors really thought they were going to win to the point where there kind of wasn't a plan after they lost. Uh. And so that led to the loyalists winning really hard for a while there. So it, 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 if you're a traitor and you remember it, you... you it hold, was bad. You hold a grudge. Mm-hmm. You hold a grudge. And so he's he's left in this middle spot, not only being like the youngest there, which gives him an inferiority complex, but also being in between legions because he's a mix, right? He's None of them really love him. The Imperial Fists are never going to accept him. <laughs> and the Iron Warriors accept him on the basis of, that's another body, cool. They throw it into the fire. Throw it into the fire. So he got, this. this really all leads to him getting a chip on his shoulder so big it needs its own zip code. He he has to he has to prove them wrong in everything he do he does. So he just he has one hell of a work ethic, and I mean it's enough to stand out in a legion of people who would unironically have hustle and grind posters on their walls. He stands out among Iron Warriors. He was so extreme that in this in this absolute dog walking I mentioned earlier, um, the Imperial Fist. I'll be fair to them. They put up enough of a fight that there was basically nobody in command left that could that could be promoted. So Hansu was there. So he got promoted, not only because of how hard he worked, but also because he somehow survived losing an arm in the process, I believe, but survived. And as a result, he also got to keep some of the spoils of war, which is the main thing that made this assault really important. They got a ton of Space Marine gene seed. I mean, a just a boatload of this stuff. Like a lot. A lot of it. It's the blueprint to make marines, and it's really coveted by chaos, because they cannot make marines to save their lives. I mean, okay, I, I, will, be, I will be fair. It I does seem fair. like it's a hard gig. Nobody can make marines reliably. Pretty much only Gilliman can make marines reliably, and that's not just not favoritism, it's just because... He's, Van- the, he's the demigod of logistics. No, no, it's vanilla and milk toast don't cause many allergies. Uh-huh. It's it's boring. <laughs> like, it's just... Yeah, of course. The Legion that's just all around... It's... Yeah, Gilliman of all the Legions probably has one of the easiest times with the whole with the whole GNC acceptance. A lot don't. Chaos really doesn't. Because um, a lot... A lot of it is, uh, like... You're becoming eight foot tall, and it doesn't matter what size you were before. Before Your bones are going to become harder than ever before. You're going to have a second heart. It's a very invasive process through and through. And then on top of that, everyone has different procedures and trainings you need to go through. Like, Gilliman's is just, hey, what's uh, your average word per minute while you're eating? We just need to know that. It's, it's kind of important. We, we like to read a lot here. And then some will be like, okay, cool, you're in the Arctic now, bye. <laughs> and that's just... You, do you see why some legions have a harder time than others? What would you rather have, an ice pick or a stenography keyboard? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Could you please assemble that keyboard for me in the perfect format? Thank you very much. We just we're gonna need that later. Thank you. Like it's just make sure they're like uh, make sure they're like uh, perfect uh, panda switches. That's I only use those. That's what the ultramarines do. It's why they have such an easy time getting more marines. It's why their numbers have always been ridiculous, and why they're in every single front line ever, pretty much. But on top of um, the training and the process itself to make a Marine really cutting down on your odds of ever making one, Chaos itself kind of shoots itself in the foot because it is entropy. It is decay. It is the end of everything. It is everyone's apocalypse. It will warp and mess with everything, including their own DNA. So mutations happen all the time. And If your odds were already 0.001, making a Chaos Marine reliably, unmutated, 
it becomes almost a miracle. I mean, just look at the Death Guard. They've got like a bunch of weird growths all over them. Sometimes they just like have intestines poking out. I so or like like uh, any any uh, Zinchian like followers. They've just got like tentacles and eyes all over the place. I'm so infinitely proud of you. That's exactly what I was going to bring up. He's lighting. Yeah. Pretty, and then you have the Thousand Suns who are just dust in their armor. It's just. You know? Literally pulling an Alphonse Elric. Yeah, so it's it's one of the biggest problems that Chaos will always have is making more Marines. And so in this very hypocritical way, they're almost admitting defeat every time they have to go after Loyalist Gene Seed because they're kind of admitting that those guys have it figured out, you know? You can't not do that. It's just like, I guess you guys are right. Your thing works better. Yeah. And yes. that is the great problem that Hansu set off to fix. Remember this. We're going to table it. We'll be back to it later. We need to bring up a new character. He's our resident ultramarine, Uriel. And he was exiled. <laughs> and he was exiled for sending over a, for a file with formulas instead of values. <laughs> I'm partially kidding. He, The real reason he was exiled is because... Okay, so there's this thing called the Codex of Studies. They are religious about it. It's their version of the Art of War. It says what to do, what not to do during combat. He disregarded it to win a fight. And that's an important thing. He won the fight. However, he disregarded the Codex of Studies and abandoned his brothers ah. to get it done. And so in the eyes of them, they're like, well, that's just cowardice. You left. And it doesn't matter how much you argue, Like, but, but we still won. That doesn't matter. They you fight like this. Quite literally threw the book at him. Yeah. And so... And also, to be fair, it does also kind of look shady. I mean, he did just leave, and then suddenly the fight was won. So it's like, what did you do while you were gone? Exactly. So it's and there's traitors everywhere. You can never be sure. Regardless, um, the the recourse here is one of two things: either execution or a death oath. And he got a death oath, which is just an execution with more steps. This is uh, the the difference between uh, uh, death or death by snooze snoo. Yeah. You have no idea how right you are. That's what's upsetting to me. You have no idea how correct you are. Regardless, it's an unwinnable mission, and his in specific was to go to. It's basically it's a mission that you can you're, you're not gonna come you're not gonna come back from. It's the equivalent of climb Everest in a hoodie and lick the top for me, please. Ah, uh. figure it out. Okay, bye. They they know you're not coming back from this. It, that's the point. But if you do, like you take a picture of licking the top of Everest with all the pollution in the background and everything, I, sure, I welcome guess, back. I guess you were in your place back. Good yeah. job. I can see the curvature of the Earth and everything. Good for you, dude. Um, his um, makes climbing Everest naked sound like a breeze. Because he was told to get into the Eye of Terror and mess with whatever Hansu was doing on his planet. That sounds like a one-way trip. It is. It's the equivalent of being sent on a penny raid to the Pentagon. <laughs> or being sent to steal the toilet out of the White House. It's that level. He barely makes it to this planet to begin with, and there's some warp chicanery that helps him along the way, but he does ultimately make it. And this is where the spiral begins. I'll be honest. Um, I want you to remember this. Before he was told, I mean, before he was sent here, um, he was specifically told by one of his librarians that uh, he's seeking this place where twist a twisted reflection of space marines is being wrought in iron. Remember that. Just I'll remember that. There's a lot of remembering this episode, but you need to. It's going to be like the worst game of Jenga you've ever played when this falls down. Uh -huh. Okay. So when they arrive, one of the first things they discover is these massive sheets of leather tanning in the wind. And it's, it's, I'm talking sails. It's 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 far too big to even be from like a cow if you got it all in one go, which I think is just how you get leather to begin with all in one go. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it is just all in one yeah, go. But, but it's it's the largest. It 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 looks jarring. It's like it had to be an elephant or something. But it's weird. But whatever. They see these weird cultists tending to it. It's probably chaos related. Burn it all. Keep pushing. Regardless. Get rid of the chaos, let's go find more chaos. Yeah, and that, that's what they do. They literally burn it all to the ground, leather and all, and keep it pushing. And then they continue on this um, nigh-impossible mission. And along the way, they bump into the cultists again in what looks to be like this pr uh, procession. leading. Um, and in that procession, there are these figures wearing these long 
robes made of that same uh, leather that we saw earlier, right? Just, I mean, flowing robes. And it's only upon closer inspection when they see the figures moving in these robes that they realize they're not wearing any robes. It's not robes that they're wearing, but rather their skin stretched to ludicrous proportions. Mm. And as they're being marched forwards towards this platform that I will describe in the most PG way possible as the Potato Peeler 9000. <laughs> Thankfully, the Marines step in to save them before they get to that. And even though they do save these things, they're not even sure they're people to begin with. Because it looks like just a caricature of a human. And any form of sanity they had is long gone. Mm. They're just stuck wailing, drowning in these robes almost that are made of them. We're, we're, so we're, we're, we're talking like, uh, think scorn, weird bio horror kind of thing happening. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Now we get to the demonculaba itself. Editing Coda here. Just letting you know, the timestamp on screen will skip to the end of the Demonculaba description. It is kind of gross, and if you are weak of body, weak of mind, or weak of stomach, as I am, uh, you can skip to the end. And this is the, or I think the least haunting way I could go about it, is by just describing it from a logistics perspective. It's just the way my mind works. <laughs> and okay, Gilliman. It, it's a... It's a it's a twisted construct, and it's it's made from this pact forged in hell itself. And I just don't mean in the warp. I mean, this is the worst of the worst. Oh, this it's, is like hell hell. It, it's it, No, no, the figures in this pact are terrible. It's the Kobe and Shaq of cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> it's it's a Messi and Suarez of just people you never want to bump into. They, they took the they took the Eighth Amendment and said mm, that's a guidebook. Yeah, the dark one of them is the Dark Mechanicum, which is just experimentation gone rogue. The only way you advance knowledge is by pushing at the boundaries. So we'll push at every boundary, and that's what they do. They don't care. There's no ethics committee. There's no oversight. There's no nothing. They would just do. Will you maybe learn something from this? Go for it. And then there is the <laughs> the Iron Warriors. Do I need to say more? This is a bad combination They already. have no ethics, no morals, no boundaries. They get the job done, and don't you dare complain about how they do it. This sounds like an awful combination. Yeah. Yeah, when they're put together, you get something that makes the Night Lords either smile or shudder. I'm not sure which. Um, they built this process that starts with regular people and pushes them down one of three paths. Path A is the path we talked about, and this is the relatively merciful one. <laughs> if in this path, you're hooked up to all kinds of machinery with the sole purpose of keeping you alive in the medical sense only. Which, for those of you that don't know, it's organs functioning as they should. Mm. That's, that's... Just bare minimum homeostasis. Yeah, yeah. And there's all these... You're like, you are... Fully strung up, there's nothing you can do about this. And there are all these tubes going into you that are constantly feeding you more and more and more nutrients, just over and over and over again. Scaling over and over, making you grow to these grotesque proportions where your own limbs cannot carry your weight. A factory farmed people. Yeah, actually, <laughs> exactly. From here, they're marched out from the aforementioned Potato Peeler 9000, and the robes that they helped manufacture will come into play later. But that's what those sheets were. And this is the merciful route. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, path B. Similar to path A, you get hooked to tons of machinery to keep, keep you alive. And again, medical definition. And pure get, homeostasis. Yeah, pure else. homeostasis. Well, it's, it's more like pulse. Oh. <laughs> it's pulse. That's it. <laughs> and you are then fed constant nutrients to help you just get to that enormous size. And somehow being used for clothing would be worse than what comes next. Because in this case, you get... Uh, you get used to reverse C-section a teenage captor into you. And are used as a pod to gestate and host... The various changes that are going to happen to that poor kid until they become a full-grown, eight-foot-tall space marine. Eight, seven and a half to eight and a half feet, really. Like, but who's measuring? Either way, it's way too big to be in your body. 
Ick. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, their vocal cords are removed because they'll, they'd be just screaming the entire time. Yeah. It, it would be constant. And it is described as being barely held together. I mean, just stitches everywhere. Things are scabbed over. It, it gets really very detailed. There are tubes everywhere. Um, you can see the future Marines, let's call them, worming about inside and distending everywhere they push. Like, there's this one horrific scene where there's this sheet. And again, this is a person, but it's described as a sheet, barely stitched together. Just like, the, the very staples themselves are just barely holding on, and you can see like a handprint pressing against it before being pulled back. Mm. Yeah. It was terrifying enough that when Uriel saw this, he began crying. Uh, just oh, to full... make a space marine cry. Yeah, it made a space marine cry. And what's worse, he got to experience it firsthand, being sealed inside one. Which brings us to Path C, the poor teenage captors, and I suppose Uriel now. <laughs> he and them are sealed into the demoncula, but very much so alive, very much so against your will. And it is described as a room that is constantly pulsing. Like you're, you're at some point, like, you know, you know, they're like a mother's heartbeat and the kids are usually like in sync kind of, yeah, it's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you can feel the pulsing everywhere. You cannot open your eyes. You cannot open your mouth or it'll be filled with stinging fluid. And you can feel these cords reaching out to connect to you. First one and then an uncountable amount bur burying themselves in. Eventually slowly twisting and warping your body, changing it in ways you can't imagine. The, the pain your host is feeling will be inflicted upon you. You can feel their suffering. Mm -hmm. And your body is slowly changing. Your bones, again, space marines are barely human. Second heart happens in there. Your bone density goes through the roof. Your size goes through the roof. Everything that goes on in a space marine happens in there. And those changes happen over however long it takes. Now, you may be wondering, why would they seal a full-blown space marine in there? What, what's going to happen? I assume that's where, like, the weird chaos stuff happens. No, it's just because they didn't know. <laughs> They're like, oh, it'll probably lead to mutations, but we don't know what happens if you feel f put so a full this, marine. So this was an experimentation. They're like, we have a full marine. We've never done this before. I told you they're the worst. Oh, this is it really boils down to, well, we've never done this before. <laughs> and so that's why Uriel is sealed if in. only the word gross could succinctly express the feeling that I have right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, again, it's not just like one umbilical cord. It, they're burrowing into your skin. It's yeah. not great. They no. will pry open your mouth. They will peel open your eyes. It's, it's, it does not sound great. It's not. And the only way out is when you are a finished Marine, and with that strength, you can leave. Mm -hmm. Usually at the expense of the host. I yeah, but you know, Uriel's a, he's a, he's a full blown marine. So he and even that he barely manages to rip out because they use some industrial grade sutures. I don't know how they manage it. I I don't know how, but they do. And part of the process is also these tendrils will hold you down too. Like it's an uncountable amount. They will just like wrap around you and hold you down. Uh, it's also described as being able to drive you insane. Oh, weird, weird chaos warps and shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. You can, it, it, it's, I can't fathom what that would feel like being unable to move, unable to scream. You can't open your eyes and you can just feel bones growing at different paces, muscles just tightening and becoming like industrial springs. There's just, it, it, it's horrifying. No, thank you. And in Uriel's case, it was fresh air. He was out. It still smelled terrible in there, but it's, oh my God, so much better than the alternative. So much better than the alternative. However... For most um, of those would-be Marines that make it out, uh, instead of bare air being refreshing, it is cold beyond belief and brings with it a searing pain across their exposed muscle. Ah, no skin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no skin. Have you figured out what the coats are for now? <laughs> it's, yeah. Duh. Yeah. And so if you manage to keep it together... 
through the whole process. You don't have to keep it together while you're just exposed to the elements and you're inspected head to toe and they're like, eh, okay, well, close enough. Go on. And then they send you over to get that new suit. Fitted. Yeah, fitted, yeah. Ugh. It's why the humans need to be pulled to those extreme proportions because Marines are really extreme. They're huge. They are they are eight foot tall and like four foot wide. <laughs> They're, yeah, you know? And so that's, that's what Pat pays need, for. Yeah, if you are like most people who went through this and went insane... Rightfully so, by the way. <laughs> Very rightfully so. You know, not just chaos warp shenanigans. That's just mind breaking. Mm-hmm. You will then hear pull the lever, cronk, and the floor will open beneath you, and you'll get flushed away. Mm-hmm. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not joking. There's a hatch that they open, and you just enter their like, effectively sewer system, and you're washed out because they don't care. It's like, oh, that one's a failure. Moving on. Doof. And that is the position Uriel found himself in, and he also discovered that you know. When you burst out, the thing that was hosting you will probably die. They just scrape that off the floor and throw it in with you. Yeah. And so that's where Uriel and his band wind up at the very end of this just castle's drainage system, I suppose, where they bump into every single failure. I'm talking hundreds of rejects. And even though they didn't, they didn't, first of all, they don't get skin. Let's just start there. Yeah, they don't have skin. They don't have skin. They're only all the success- skinless. Only the, su- the successful get skin. But the only reason they don't kill Uriel and company is because he, quote, smells of the mother. And these things, even though they're, they're, they're failures, they're not full-blown Marines, they're still strong. They're still, like, I mean, like, they, they still underwent the process. They may not have the mind of a Marine. Maybe they failed because they don't have both hearts. The extra lung can't spit acid. I don't know why they failed. But one thing that they all have in spades is ungodly levels of strength. There are Marines where it counts. I wouldn't even say where it counts because a big chunk of Marines is up here. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, oh my God, that's so much muscle. And there's a genius inside it. Yeah. <laughs> there's a genius who knows how to use the muscle. Yeah. So it's, it's. So they're just, yeah. His grip is described like a dreadnought. <laughs> yeah, and so that's the only reason they do not kill Uriel. At this point, by the way, Uriel's been able to uh, get a few people to come to come with him. Um, he got some. He found some guardsmen who were actually from that siege where the Imperial fists got absolutely destroyed. And he also found some renegade space marines. And these are not chaos marines, but they also aren't loyalists. They're just traitors. You know, a, a lot of Chaos Marines are Renegade Marines, but not all Renegade Marines are Chaos Marines. They're just like, hey, I didn't like the Imperium. You know, they had some political beliefs I disagreed with, but those Chaos guys, they're freaking weird. Yeah, and so th- this group is then led by the the unfleshed to their leader. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's during this, pretty much everyone present is falling apart. It, I, I mean, <laughs> Uriel went through that. All, all of them are collectively just done and they don't want any I just want to go home. <laughs> yeah, and Uriel has a death oath, so he has to deal with it. I can't go home. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's it's at this point that the renegade marines are like, okay, you have a death oath? Good for you, buddy. I don't. See ya. And they just leave. <laughs> like, he's just abandoned by marines. You want to know the one person who steps up first when he says we need to get back into that palace? Who? Oh. The guardsman. The regular ass people who saw that and like experienced that horror, which I am sanitizing as heavily as possible. This is the very cleaned version. Oh, I, I figured because this yeah. is still going on YouTube and yes. not Patreon. This is the very heavily sanitized version. They saw horrors on, on incomprehensible and them, they went, yeah, no, we'll do this. They said, let's go again. M- meanwhile, Space Marines are, this is one of the few, because Space Marines are, they're built to be weapons. You don't see them deal with combat-related trauma very often. I mean, you do, but they, they usually... The Space Marine formula to PTSD is thug it out. <laughs> and so you you so rarely see them actually... Like, you know the way in every movie ever, it'll be like two people side by side, and then one gets shot in war, and the other goes, oh my god. The Space Marine will just go, whatever. They'll just firm it and keep going. It won't change their aim. But in this case, they're genuinely shaken, and the guardsman goes, somebody needs to deal with this. <laughs> and I suppose it has to be me. And um, 
as they're being marched to this den of the again unflashed um they uh it's actually it turns out they didn't decide not to kill them they just brought them there to deliberate their fates and um they they see somehow even more misery than what we described so, somehow because it's not just Oh, you know, you failed because you're stupid. Some of them are like twisted and warped, spare limbs, no limbs, can't walk, just a torso. Like it's just. I would imagine this isn't an exact process. It's it's really not. And somehow, funnily enough, it's described. This is one of the most efficient ways you can make it. But we'll get to this later. We'll get to this later. Okay, efficiency and accuracy are two different things. Logistically speaking, and only logistically speaking, does it make sense? We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but. In, in there, they see this statue built with whatever they could dig up from the greats that looks an awful lot like the Emperor of Mankind. And what I like about that, because I'm not going to spoil the whole book, it's actually a very good book, fair warning. You just have to have a strong stomach. Um, like, I couldn't eat while I was reading it, but it's, it's, it's written really tightly. It's, I'm, I'm going to say the problem, but it's, you know, it's the pro. Um... But what I like about that statue is it shows that even though they're in one of the worst situations you can be in, they still have this almost faith in the Emperor. Which brings the possibility that they may be failures just because these ones are destined to be loyalists. Like these guys had the makings of greatness and Chaos doesn't want that, so they were rejected. And I just, I, it's, it's very touching. Um, the rest of the book is them storming the castle. Touching. This is still a meat statue of the emperor. It's as touching as you can get, dude. Give them some slack. Okay? They're like always cold. This is like, this is like llamas with hats level, like, ugh. Yeah, pretty much. Um, the rest of the book is pretty straightforward. They storm the castle with their help. Um, the unfleshed help. Um, a demon gets loose. The guardsman has a great moment where he taunts a chaos marine and wins. It's, well, yeah, they, they find this uh, chaos marine who turned on Hansu and was hooked up to one of those many, many torment devices. And so they're like, we'll kill you if you tell us how to take apart this thing. And the guy's like, okay, fine, here, this is how you do it. And I'll, let me let me die. And Yuri's like, okay, we'll let the guardsman do it because we got to let the guardsman do something. And the guardsman just said, Uriel promised, but I didn't. And he just, he, he, I'm not like comically, he leaves the room, hold on, walks back in, grabs the grenade that was nearby, wouldn't want you dying too soon, and then leaves. That, the, the, if there's any winners in the story, it's that guardsman. It's the guard. This is why people love the guard. There's like the stones on this man. The stones on Taunting this man. Taunting a chaos marine. He, he is hooked up to all kinds of machinery, don't get me wrong, but still. And I, I don't want to spoil it, because again, the, the guard have so many good moments in the book, but the good guys win at the end of the day. The book really takes an upswing from there. It's 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 Space Marines win at the end of it, the day. It, it takes it from, ooh, to, well, at least it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, the worst thing about it, though, for me, is what I was mentioning earlier. Logistically speaking, and only logistically speaking, does the Demonculaba kind of make sense. Because... It's it's fairly sound. It's like it's like they're doing the ruthless calculus of well, we need space marines, and we can't make them the traditional way. No, well, you can't. But they're just gonna come out mutated. So I guess this is what we're doing. Well, and the writer is so bang on because, again, if anyone else had written this, I would have been like, ew, ick. What it, basement did this leave? But in the whole, like, what it's a part of, it's A, an essential part of the story. You can't take it out. B, it really is reflective of the characters because, of course, the Iron Warriors would do this. Of they, course, the Dark Mechanics they don't, would do this. They don't give a care. Yeah, they don't They don't care at all. This is the perfect... So it's not... Like, you know, in, in every bad, like, bit of fiction where just suddenly the character changes overnight to be a villain, like kicks a dog off screen levels. No, th these are the people who would kick dogs. Yeah, exactly. They're playing hacky sack with dogs. The, uh, these are the guys who just do not care. Like it makes so much sense that they, they you tell them to skin a cat, they will do it the best way possible. You want Marines, you got Marines. Don't whine. 
They're there, okay? Is the skin a little loose? Yeah, but does it matter? No. It's a marine. It's a marine. If it walks like a marine and quacks like a marine. Yeah, and then and then you also consider the fact that the GNC that they use for this process isn't just the stuff they took from the Imperial Fists, but they also cut it with some of their own recycled material so that it goes, like, to stretch it out, basically. And the recycled material they get is from repurposing all the fallen that they have from their previous wars. And they just kind of feed them into like a meat compactor, basically. And it's then turned into like a paste that's fed into the demoncula, but that's then fed into the... It's really grim. There's a lot of red stuff moving around, let's it's call it. extremely mm-hmm. grim. And, and, and the fact that because the human body, you know, there's only so many pints in us. Really? And you can only lose so many before you A, black out, or B, just, you know, pass on. And so do you know how they fix this problem? Do you know how they... <laughs> you know that in the real world... I shouldn't be laughing, but in the real world, whenever a tragedy... You have to laugh in the face of... Oh. I mean, really, it's the only way you cope. But <laughs> in the real world, whenever there's a tragedy, one of the first things that every everybody needs is blood donations. Because blood banks will run low, right? The Iron Warriors fix this problem. They never ask for blood donations. Do you want to know why? They just bleed people. No. What? They did something genius. What did they do? They have a coronate demon chained up in the basement. They have Mr. Blood for the Blood God's worker there. Of course he's going to be an infinite donor. It makes sense. And of course it's going to be every blood type A through Z. It makes sense. The guy's got a waterfall of the stuff at home. It's so brilliant. Editing Coda again for a minor correction and a note for my sander. Uh, apparently, this demon was mostly just used for its psychic barrier, but could cause the blood storms that they would use to harvest blood. <laughs> like it, I hate it, but it works. And that demon plays a crucial part, by the way, in taking it apart because they, they free the demon and oh, boy, oh, it takes it apart. It's mad about being used for that. Does it say red cross on my forehead? No. Okay. I am not blood donations. I'm the blood taker. Yeah, exactly. It's just, I, 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 I hate it so much, but it makes so much sense. Like, it and is de facto the most efficient plus if way to go about it. If there's any one thing TLC has taught me, it's the fact that the human body can really stretch. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fairly sound. Mm-hmm. And that's the worst thing. This is the cursed version of that one YouTube channel, Stretching with David. I don't know that. Oh, I know that guy. He's great. Oh, that's terrible. Why would you bring him into this? <laughs> that was such a high and then immediate low. I have to cope somehow. <laughs> well, if there is a silver lining, did you know TLC stands for the Learning Channel? <laughs> and that is the one thing I have learned from them. What? It's true. Dude, all they ever have is like reruns of my 10 hundred thousand pound life. Okay? <sighs> That's it. That's all. And and also on top of all of that, it's all happening in the warp, which will mess with your longevity. That's a known thing. It's why there's Chaos Marines that remember the heresy. They were there. Just, it, it all makes sense. It's all fairly sound. And... Oh, that sucks. That it really sucks. Yeah. However, like I said, um, it's... It's... um. It's, I'm not going to say it's the worst. Okay, here's the thing. It's a very specific frame of bad. It's very, it's very grim. It's very body horror. It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, mm-hmm. it's giving somebody solved the puzzle box and now. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. It's, it's, it's fairly well thought out. It's part of a really good series and the writer's got some serious chops going on. Um, nothing feels out of character. Nothing feels out of place. Um, and it's just a horror writer in his own, you know? Like, of course it's going to be horrifying. He's doing horror writing. Um, what I will say is, 40K has never gone that dark before. So... They were treading new ground. So maybe even GW said, ooh, you went a bit far. <laughs> ooh. Or maybe it was an edict from GW. I don't know. Maybe they said, make something scary. And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> you I, have no idea the inner machinations you, of my mind. You just drafted the best guy for the job. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's what happened maybe he didn't want I, I don't know but um what i do know is they've never done that before like since if there's anything that would scare people away from 40k that's that's one of the probably ones. that one it's, that is definitely not the first thing i would tell somebody about if i was introducing them to 40k and it's why whenever somebody asks some the immediate response is don't look it up don't look it up don't look it up and um that's really the one of the two responses that people give it's either don't look it up or it's just a tuesday for me 
And for those people, <laughs> for those people, dude, I, my, my, I, I don't, I don't fault them because I mean, I've been on the internet. I've seen what it is. It just proves to I've me. I've seen, I've seen the live leak lay the video. I, I've seen the live leak logo. You know, it's just, it's just a thing. But um, it, it proves to me that the internet can be a really, really, really messed up place because I, I can, I'm calling me psychic. I can feel it. There's going to be about half the comments going, yeah, I've seen worse. And for most people on the outside, it's like, why? Why, why have you seen worse? How have you seen worse? We're past Dunkirk. This isn't Normandy anymore. Why? Where have did you seen we worse? get worse? What the hell? And it's like, oh well, I took a left turn on the wrong subreddit. It's like, okay. it's just that easy. It's it's literally just that it's easy. It's literally sometimes. just that you can easy. Just take a left and go. Hmm. hmm I'm on fifty fifty now. That's a, that's a factory worker. Fantastic. <laughs> so. POV, yeah. you're a worker at an iron uh, uh, iron refining facility, and you see the live leak logo po- <laughs> posted in the top right corner of your vision. Yeah, horrifying. Um, and then also another thing about it is it's a different, it's it's a very specific and gross kind of horror, like you're saying, body horror. It's very body um, horror. It's not that doesn't mess with everyone, right? Personally, I'm not the biggest fan, but some people just like there there are horror buffs who see that and they go meh, don't care, you know. So. For some, it might not affect you, but for those of you that it does, we did give warning. So there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much, though. Uh, on a much, 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 much brighter, brighter note. I, on a sh- much brighter. It's note. all up from here. That's all I have. It's to say. time for the victory lap, baby. We have <laughs> done it. There is a plaque in the mail, and we have done what? I looked up the numbers. One percent. One percent. Less than one percent of YouTubers get to hundred thousand. Period. That's we are we are we are in the less than one percent. We're yeah, it's a statistical anomaly, and it wouldn't be possible without each and every single one of you. Those of you on Patreon, those of you you know outside of Patreon, those of you who watch us here, uh, those of you who listen um, on Spotify. What's a surprise? You know, I'm honestly mm-hmm. surprised at how many people like listen to us through like uh, Spotify, oh, like podcasts, it, Google Podcasts. It's quite literally double. Like the views we get here are then doubled by the audio version because there's just so many people. It's insane. Listen. Yeah, and so we we love the audio listeners. We love the the, the visual viewers. Um, and it's none of this is possible without you guys. So thank you so so much. And, you know, on a really bright note, too, this is the canon best order these episodes could have ever gone in. This is the Halloween. This is no. this is the scary month. No, no, no. Think about it. October started with Oryx. And now there's Demonculaba, too, episode 69. And then... Oh, right. God. And then, and then, on top of all of that, the Night Lords are going to get the Halloween one. That's the perfect canon order, in my opinion. I wouldn't want it... Any other? Well, I mean, you could probably switch the Night Lords and the Demonculaba, but then no, I think it works better as is. I think either way, it's horrifying. Either this way, it's is horrifying. the lit- this is the de facto scary month. Yeah, this is the horrifying month. I don't know how we're going to top this next year, but uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I want to after this episode. <laughs> a reading of the book. It's a good book. It really is. <sighs> it's just very descriptive. A reading of the book, doing our best impression of um, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't do impressions to save my life. I wish I could. Who did the reading of uh, uh, Fifty Gilbert Shades of Grey? Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. Put some respect on his name. Yeah, I'm horrible. Well, I'm horrible peace. with names. Yeah, but G- Iago. He was Iago. I couldn't even remember that character, and he popped into my head. Okay. No, I remember the character, but the, not the name. We are going to... I'm awful with names. We are going to end on that heresy right there. Uh, thank you so much for being you, and we will see you next week for the Night Lord episode. The Night Lord. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you guys. There's going to be an Ultramarine one. Yeah, but the Night Lords are first, so... <sighs> Whatever. Good job. Biased. <laughs>